Mike Zeno Ministries presents Called to Victory. Now here are your hosts, the senior pastors of Glory and Peace Church International, Pastors Mike and Maria Efezino. The message today I want to caption, and this is something that I am not good at, but one of these days I will be good at it. Giving titles to messages, I just I'm just one of those that just comes and preaches. And uh so I, I very rarely give titles to messages. But if I were to give a, uh, a, a title to the message today, it would be The Great Exchange. The Great Exchange. Because God wants to do an exchange with you. He wants to take your death from you and give life to you. He wants to take sickness from you and give health to you. He wants to take poverty from you and give you riches. He wants to take sin from you and give you righteousness. He wants to exchange with you today. Will you be willing to make that exchange? God wants to exchange with you. Are you ready for the exchange? You know, I happen to travel a great deal. And um, when I am outside of North America, I always have to do an exchange, a currency exchange, so that I can do business in the new country that I find myself. Well, there's an exchange that you need to make to do business in the kingdom of God. And the question once again is this, are you willing to make that exchange? Now, the Bible tells us in Mark 15, Mark 15, I'm going to start reading from verse 6. Now, at that feast, he released unto them one prisoner, whomsoever they desired. And there was one named Barabbas, Barabbas, which lay bound with them that had made insurrection with him, who had committed murder in the insurrection. And the multitude crying aloud began to desire him to do as he had ever done unto them. But Pilate answered them, saying, Will ye that I release unto you the king of the Jews? For he knew that the chief priests had delivered him for envy. But the chief priests moved the people that he should rather release Barabbas unto them. And Pilate answered and said again unto them, What will ye then that I do unto him whom ye call the king of the Jews? And they cried out again, Crucify him. Then Pilate said unto them, Why? What evil had he done? And they cried out the more exceedingly, Crucify him. The exchange was between the Son of God and the Son of God. What do you mean, Pastor? The name Barabbas means Son of God, Son of the Father. Jesus is the true Son of the Father. But on the day that he came to die on the cross, an exchange was made between him, the Son of God, the true, only begotten Son of God, and the son of God, Barabbas, who was a thief, who was a robber, who was a criminal, who was a sinner. Why did God choose this? Well, because as far as God was concerned, he looked at you. He looked at me, all of us sinners. And he said, that's a son. That's my son. That's my daughter. That's my child. God saw a Barabbas that was a sinner, and he said, and gave him a name to match up with his destiny. Because that day, he was going to come 
and exchanged places with him. Barabbas was to die that day. He had been involved in an insurrection. He was rebellious. He was fighting against the system. He, wasn't, he didn't want to be under a system that kept him in bondage. And I believe there are so many of us that are fighting, fighting against the system, the world system, fighting against every system out there. It's not that you don't love God. It's not that you don't want God. It's not that you don't want to be part of the family of God. It's that you're trying to do it in your own ability, in your own strength, in your own power, with your own wisdom, with your own intellect, with your own psychology, but it is not working. You are only kicking against the purposes of God and kicking against the systems of the world without the ability to break out. But today there's one who is coming who is going to take your place so that you can, you that was meant to die, you meant to be destroyed, that you can come to life. Jesus came to exchange places with Barabbas, son of the father. God knows that you are his son, and he's come to make an exchange with you. He came to make sure that you and I have eternal life. Jesus, our Lord, had been betrayed by one whom he loved, Judas. He's been drugged before the leaders, the high priest. He has been accused. He's already experienced not only betrayal, but denial by one that was very close and dear to him. Have you ever been betrayed? Have you ever been denied? The Bible tells us in Matthew that as he was brought to the house of Annas, the father of the high priest, that Peter and John were with him. The Bible says John went in because the family knew him. Peter stayed at the door. The young lady who was the gatekeeper saw Peter and said to Peter, aren't you one of them? And Peter says, God forbid. No, I'm not one of them. I don't know that guy. John had an entrance because of somebody he knows. I digress for a moment to say that God is about to connect you with somebody that knows you so that you can have entrance. Peter was going to be given the same opportunity to go in, have entrance, because somebody identified him, but he denied, I don't know him. And so he was shut out. Sometimes we deny when entrance is about to be given to us. We deny the connectivity. Are you denying Jesus? Because you think something bad is going to happen? Read a story. A true story. And these things are happening around the world. People have been persecuted. They came in. And they're going to kill everybody. Who will not deny Jesus Christ? And there they were in church. And this person walked away. And that person walked away. And that person walked away denying Jesus. But there was one seated there. That will not move. This happened to take place in the underground church in China. 
soldiers were there. And yet they were slipping out. We're not part of it. And finally, when everybody is gone, they congratulated the lady and said, we too, we are Christians. We wanted to make sure there were no traitors in here. Betrayal, denial. They had the opportunity to stand for the living God, but at the time of crisis, they denied. We have opportunities every day to either declare that we belong to the Lord, or we don't. And it doesn't necessarily have to mean the giving up of your life. Sometimes we deny because of little things here and there that in the end of all the story matters nothing. Jesus came to make an exchange he had been denied. He had been betrayed. And now he has an insurrection against him. And here he is before Pilate. And Pilate knows that the reason he's, this man is standing before him is not because of anything wrong that he's done, but because of envy and jealousy. The, the, the system, the religious system, didn't want him. They've already plotted against him because he had raised up a, a man that had been dead called Lazarus. When they saw him raise Lazarus from the dead, they, instead of celebrating that there is one who has come with great power to raise the dead back to life, let's connect with him, let's work with him. No, they sat around planning on how they could destroy him. Now was the opportunity. But here's the crowd. They've seen Jesus heal the sick. They've seen Jesus deliver people, cast out demons, cleanse lepers, and, and, and here he is. And the religious leaders who've done absolutely nothing for them convince them to shout, crucify him, crucify him. Crucify him, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. What? How did they convince them? Because they wanted to be part of a group. They are afraid of being set aside, isolated, shut off. They wanted to be part of a group of people, a society, a social group. A religious group. Well, if he dies, I still have to go to the temple. I don't want to be set aside. And No, if you want to follow Jesus, you've got to shun the world and follow him. And one of these days, you are going to have an opportunity to make that decision. One of these days, you will have the opportunity to make that decision on whether you're going to follow God or follow the systems of this world. What will your decision be then? Jesus made his decision. His decision was to set his face, his face as a flint to go to Jerusalem. He knew what was awaiting him there. He knew he was going to die there. But he had already started rehearsing. The Bible says he went to the Garden of Gethsemane. And when Judas went to betray him with, with 30, 30 um, coins, received 30 coins, 
as the price of his betrayal, he knew where he was going to be because the Bible says he oftentimes went to that garden. He knew. I came to this world to be crushed, to be squeezed. And he was always there as oftentimes as he came, he went to the garden of Gethsemane. This was not the first time. So the Bible says Judas knew where he was going to be at. And so was able to lead them to that place. But when, the, when Judas brought the people out to meet them, the Bible says, Jesus said, friend, what can I do for you? He did not allow himself to become bitter. It was a decision. You may be persecuted, but you are not called to bitterness. Jesus on the cross said, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. He made a decision to stay in love because he wanted to exchange places with the haters because he loved them. He loved them in spite of all of their failures, in spite of their sin. He loved you and I in spite of all our failures and our sin and all the confusion that we carry around. The Bible tells us that he came to take our burdens. He came to take away our sins. He came to take away the old man and in exchange give us the new man himself. Barabbas was there in prison. And all he could hear, give us Barabbas, give us Barabbas, crucify him, give us Barabbas, crucify him, give us Barabbas, crucify him. And Barabbas was coming out expecting to be the one to be crucified. Because all you could hear was Barabbas and crucify him. Barabbas and crucify him. Barabbas and crucify him. And when he came out, expecting to be the one to be crucified, he saw that there was someone else. His name is Jesus. They cross paths. He's coming out and Jesus is going in. He was the one to be scourged, but instead he sees that Jesus is the one being scourged, whipped. For he was wounded for our transgressions and he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was bestowed upon him and by the stripes that he bore, we are healed. He was making an exchange, taking my sickness and taking my pain, taking my sorrow and taking my poverty, taking everything that was contrary to me and nailing it to his cross. He was making an exchange. And in that exchange, he was giving me all that he had. Bible says that he who was rich became poor that we might become rich. That day he was mocked not only with the scourging that he experienced the Bible tells us that the very beard in his face was plucked, physically plucked out. Maybe that's why I shave. I don't want anybody plucking mine. It must be painful. He is slapped, spat on. The Bible tells us that he, when you looked at him, he didn't look like he was human anymore. He was a bloody mess. Why is he going through all of that? Because he was taking all of my pain. All of your pain. 
all of your sorrow, all of your defeat, all of your shame, everything that was contrary, he was taken on to himself. The Bible says they gave to him wine and myrrh, mixed with myrrh, to drink. And the Bible says Jesus refused it. I always wondered, why did he refuse the drinking of the myrrh until it dawned on me? Oh, I get it. It's because those two became like a narcotic. That was going to prolong or try to deaden his pain so that he can basically endure it through natural means. But he was not going to rely on what man had to give to him. But he was willing to drink, taste the vinegar. Because that taste he needed to represent everything that you and I are going through. He wanted us to know he's taken from us what will cause us pain. But whatever it is that's going to be a drug, he said, don't take it. And you know in these end times, the Bible says that the world is going to be consumed by their sorceries, by their pharmaceutical systems, by their drugs. It's no wonder that in the world today, there are people popping pill after pill after pill after pill, and the pills are no, not working. They cannot work. They are only creating more problems. What you need is to exchange your pain with Jesus. He wants to take it from you and give to you his peace. He says, my peace I give to you, not like the world gives, give I unto you. Will you accept the peace of God today? Will you exchange places with him today? He came purposely to do that. He calls you a Barabbas, a son of the Father. Jesus is the son of the Father coming to take your place and saying, you son of the Father, go home, be free. I'm going to take your place. I'm going to take your punishment. I'm going to take your judgment. I'm going to take your sorrow. I'm going to take your defeats. I'm going to take all of it because after I have taken it all, I will for once and forever, at one moment, destroy the one who is bringing you all this pain. For this cause, for this reason, was the Son of God made manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. Every work of the devil is destroyable by the Lord Jesus Christ, and today he wants to destroy the works of the devil operational in your life. He wants to make dysfunctional every functionality of the darkness of hell in the name of Jesus. Christ, I declare this day, take the exchange. Take it. It is not the drugs of this world that you need. It is not the booze. It's not the marijuana. It's none, none of that. What you need is Jesus. When you have Jesus, you have the creator of the whole universe. Will you take him today? Do it right now. Let God in. Let him in. Don't be a fool. Yes, you got me right. You heard me right. Don't be a fool. It's fools that reject the love of God.
wise people make the decision to follow him. Wise people accept the love of God. Fools reject it. Will you make a decision right now? If you want to, I want to pray with you. Repeat after me these words. Lord Jesus, I am willing to make the exchange right now. I give you my life and I receive your life. Thank you for forgiveness. Thank you for salvation. Thank you, Lord, for your love. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Come into my heart. Be Lord, be Savior of my soul. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I declare right now, you are my Lord and my Savior. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. To receive a CD of today's program, send $10 to Mike Zeno Ministries, Post Office Box 3990, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R2W5H9. To order by Visa or MasterCard, call 204-582-6795. Request the program number on your screen. Thank you for watching Call to Victory with your hosts, Pastors Mike and Maria Efezino. This is a viewer-supported program. Thank you for your financial gifts. Call, write, or follow us online. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, or watch us on our YouTube channel. This has been a Mike Zeno Ministries presentation.